Welcome to the Irish Craft Beer Show, I'm Brian Condren. The 2017 Ultec Craft Brews and Food Festival was held in the Convention Centre in Dublin February 23rd, 25th last and uh, I, I went along, I had a great time, uh, there was almost 50 breweries there, over 450 beers, it was claimed to be the largest uh, beer festival ever in Ireland and after walking the, the uh, festival floor for most of that Saturday I, I'm not one to disagree with that. But, um, I attended on Sunday, so I missed the winner's presentation of the Dublin Beer Cup, which was the uh, Horizont Brewery in Hungary, who won with their Saison with beer, so uh, check them out if you get the chance. I didn't actually see any of it knocking about the festival floor, but like with uh, other previous winners, I'm sure it'll become uh, more readily available in Ireland as the, the year goes by. Uh, so as usual, I gave John Duffy the beer nut uh, microphone and uh, followed him around the floor as he, uh, with a camera as he... Uh, chatted to some of the brewers, tried to get their uh, innermost secrets and uh, craft brewing tips. Um, this year uh, we caught up with a few old friends and uh, but also tried to uh, concentrate on breweries we'd never seen before, those who was their first festival. Um, now, programming note, uh, we had such a good uh, chat with Scott of 8 Degrees, I decided to, re uh, to release it as a completely separate episode and uh, uh, that's already been out there, but uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'll put the links to it in the show description below. Um, before we head off to uh, head off to Ultec, uh, I just a quick note that uh, next month I am travelling to Minneapolis in the USA for the National Homebrewers Conference or HomebrewCon as it's uh, uh, known now. Uh, I should be taking part in a panel called uh, Homebrew Worldwide with a host of homebrewers from around the world, and uh, that'll be moderated by uh, Chip Walton of uh, Chop and Brew fame, and uh, also of this podcast fame. I don't know which one he's most known for. We'll, we'll say pretty equal, Chop and Brew and guest star in this podcast. So uh, if you are uh, heading to uh, Minneapolis for the, the uh, homebrew con, uh, please uh, give me a shout and go and check out the panel. So uh, without further ado, let's head to Altec. So the beers are uh, Rye Pale Ale and uh, Dunkelweizen. So the Dunkelweizen Alt Fact is a version of a beer you'd brewed previously? Yeah, so we did a, a Dunkel... Like, Say in the late noughties, probably, um, about 2009, I'd say, sometime like that, we brought it out. Um, so, uh, kind of got shelved for a while, and uh, yeah, we just decided to resurrect it. Um, so, uh, similar to the original recipe, probably a few tweaks in it, but um, yeah, it was kind of, I, we, a lot of people told us they really liked it, you know. People who like that style of beer love it. It's quite unusual, you don't see very many of them. No, you don't, yeah, and that was kind of another reason. We, and, and, and so many of the craft beers are so hot forward now. This one is yeah. almost the polar, it's reverse, it's, it's, it's all about the malt and the yeast. So, uh, so yeah, just kind of as a kind of, a, you know, something something different to, to all those hoppy beers. So, something bit, yeah. And uh, speaking of hoppy beers, you have the, the rye pale ale as well, and that's yeah. very much in the Galway Hooker vernacular. Yeah, so it is, a, it is a hoppy one. I suppose where it is different to the other ones we do is we didn't filter it. Okay. So we normally filter most of our beers, except for obviously the wheat beer, but, yes. but all the other ones we would filter. Any particular reason you decided not to filter it? Um, just to do something different, you know, just to... Uh, you know, I think a lot of the people into craft beer like these unfiltered beers now. They like that, 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 I suppose, you know, when you filter the beer, I don't know. I personally, I kind of like filtered beers because I think it, it actually can strip out some of the, the yeasty flavors. Yeah. But then you can also strip out some of that hop flavor as well. So, um, so it's kind of raw. Sort of. It's raw, yeah. You know, it is a raw beer. So, uh, you know, and we just, um, just really, just an experimental kind of brew, something different something new for Galway Hooker, so that's why we did it. Is rye difficult to work with at all? Well, actually, it's the first time I brewed a rye ale, and it actually went through a breeze, no problems at all. So, uh, yeah, it was, I was worried that it might, we might get a stuck mash or something, but uh, absolutely no problems. It was, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. So I'm here with one of the newer breweries, uh, which is Bridewell in Clifton, and Barbara Ann, who's the owner, founder, head brewer, chief bottle washer of Bridewell. <laughs> Hi Jaws, nice to see you here. And so, um, uh, yeah, Harry, Harry Joyce and, and Harry. myself. We are the two brewers for Bridewell Brewery in Clifton. And when did you first have beer for sale? In, in May. In May. In May 2016. And you've been going quite a long time before uh, the beer started pouring, well, is that correct? the distance from concept to first brew was quite a long one. It was from 2002 through 2002. to 2016. Yeah. Yeah, it was so, a uh, long journey. Yeah. What's the secret to doing it so quickly? <laughs> 
<laughs> Labour of love, Labor that's of love the secret. <laughs> and uh, I understand your, your brewery is a piece of Irish brewing history. It's the original porterhouse kit? It is, from their basement of the, port, of the Parliament Street porterhouse. Uh, so we managed to get our hands on that and crane it into our brewery in 2007. Uh, and everything still works? It works very well, yeah. It's looking beautiful. So. And you've launched with just the one beer? Just the one beer, a blonde, and we're draft only. And we're selling into pubs in the Greater Clifton area, up to Renville and down to uh, Bally Keneally. Fantastic. Uh, and are you finding the trades quite seasonal there? As a it's very seasonal yeah. in the west of Ireland, really, really seasonal. So uh, we'd like to, to look at ways to try and fill in the gaps. And is this your first festival as a, an exhibitor? It's our very first festival, it's our very first award, and it's a it's great Oh, what did you win? We got a bronze medal here oh, at Altec. Yeah. Fantastic, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, we just started brewing in November. November, wow, of so 2016. Brand new. Right, great. And the recipes, are they all yours so far? Yes, they are. Yeah. And tell us, what are your core beers? Our core beers are, we have a pale ale named Thieving Bastards. We've got an IPA named Heineweiser. And we've got a breakfast stout that's coming out here next week, which is a, a coffee breakfast stout. And we have our McNutty Macadamia Nut Brown Ale. And brown ales are fairly unusual for Ireland, unfortunately. Uh, why did you decide to do a brown ale? Uh, just for that reason, just because they're unusual and I wanted to do my part to uh, revive the style again. And the inclusion of nuts in there, was that just, just for fun or did a particular flavor you like? You like or? Yeah, it was for fun, but I've, I've worked with them back in the States before and they do provide a unique quality instead of hazelnuts, which most people use. And how has the local market up in Sligo taken to... So far, very positive. Like I said, we're still new, so we're just barely getting out there, but uh, reception is quite nice. And I think the, it's fair to say the beer sensation of the festival has been the coconut porter from Independent. Uh, would you agree with that? Going red now, you're getting embarrassed. Um, tell me about the coconut porter. I suppose we wanted to do a festival special that was easy to drink, but a little bit different. And uh, we decided to do a coconut porter. And how do you use the coconut in the brew? So the beer itself is quite light, it's 3.9%. Uh, nice little bit of chocolate malt, a little bit of uh, smokiness as well. But uh, we put the, we dry hopped the coconut effect. So it's basically like putting it into the fermenter towards the end of the process? Yes, exactly. So we let it uh, shred a coconut and we put it into the fermenter for a few days. And do you buy it shredded or do you have to carve them out yourselves? Or? We, we took the easy way out now. now our marketing spiel is that we collect them from the west coast. But uh, yeah, we bought them uh, shredded. And did that cause any other trouble for the, the brewing process? I imagine head retention would be an issue. Uh, we're, we're not too disappointed at this point about the head retention. We're a bit worried, but we said we'd give it a go. Fantastic. And what's your next crazy scheme? Well, world domination, but uh, we'll, do. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. So uh, we have a marketing and drinks business background for the last 20 years. Uh, myself, Joey Shore and Flora Prendergast. And um, so we work for big companies and big brands, and eventually we just wanted to do it ourselves. So we went out on our own. Uh, with our life savings, um, which our wives don't really like, but there's nothing we can do about that. So, um, so yeah, about two years ago, we approached uh, Kulan Loch Nan from White Gypsy uh, about creating a session craft beer because we found a lot of the craft beers in Ireland were very, very hoppy and very high ABV. So we wanted a beer where you could drink more than one. Um, so we created Dublin Blonde. Um, so we're in about 30 bars in Dublin at the moment. We're hoping to get to about 300 this year. And then we're going into 330 mil can then in April. And you're brewing at Hope at the moment, is that correct? Contract brewing in Hope. Um, and then we, we want to build our dream. Once people drink enough of our beer, uh, our dream is to build underneath the shadow of the stacks in Irish town. Cool. So very much a local beer for Dublin. The, the, Dublin for Dublin. The Dublin brewing scene has kind of lagged behind the rest of the country, I kind of feel. It's really strange, yeah. If, if you had gone to the festivals previously, there's a lot of kind of rural country, you know, Kinsale, Galway, places like that. So, yeah, it's a bit strange. And the other thing was, uh, you know, I asked somebody to name some breweries in Dublin and they said uh, Wicklow, Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And I went, it's on the dart. You know. So, yeah, so even though there is some little breweries in Dublin, they're not really advertising the fact that they're from Dublin. Yeah, so absolutely. Because the opportunity was having a, a beer that's, you know, iconic to Dublin. Yeah, yeah and have the stacks on the badge, yeah. exactly. And one that's not owned by, you know... <laughs> Somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you say Dublin Blonde is designed to be a session beer. Uh, what's in it? 
So we have a, it's a 4.4% Vienna style lager. So you have Mittelfru, Taurus and Saz hops. And then we use Cara Red malt then. So it's quite malty um, for a lager, but uh, I suppose that balances with the, all the hops that we use as well. And it's bloody and clean. Oh, it's, yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's a bang of, of flavour, but then it doesn't go on for too no, long. No, it just cleans off the palate and you're ready for the next one. Absolutely. And the red then is new? Red, yeah. So we literally just got that brew. We finished it last week. So we said we'd trial it at the festival and right. see how it goes. So the feedback has been really good. We, we sold three kegs last night, so we were happy enough with that. And straight down the line, traditional Irish red, crystal malt? So it's a, it's a pale, it's a pale, pale ale. Now it's a little bit confusing. Some people are saying, is it a red or is it a pale ale? So this is the branding that we're doing. So we have Dublin, Dublin red, Dublin blonde and Dublin dark, which will be our stout. Right. So, um, yeah, so it's hal- Halcyon hops um, and then the, the malt, what's the crystal malt? Yeah, yeah. Great. So, now, the other thing we do, which, which is it's just a trial, uh, we have an agitator on the nozzle, which is uh, very much like Guinness. So the little disc where you force the beer through a little disc. So that's given it a super creamy, enhanced, intense head with tiny little bubbles. So we're trialing that. So you're going to have the creaminess of something like a Guinness or a Kilkenny years ago. Um, but yet, underneath, you're going to have like a really light, refreshing pale ale. So when you started, you had three core beers. That was the the Blonde, the Saison, and the IPA. Correct, yeah. And you're still making those three. Yeah, yeah. And you've had a range of specials since the brewery came sure. online. Yeah. Um, are you continuing? Are you going to continue doing the, the yeah. one-offs? So we have our three core beers, as John said. We're hoping to add another beer to the core range. Um, so we're hoping to have four core beers by the end of the year. But we're also doing these limited editions, typically 2,000 to 4,000 litres. And the idea is just to do some different beers, get people trying, you know, different styles. Um, so we're going to keep going with our limited edition special beers. Uh, we're also hoping to do a seasonal beer, like a summer seasonal, um, that we can bring back every summer and that people will get used to maybe uh, looking out for our summer seasonal. But haven't quite nailed that one down yet. But um, yeah, we're already working on our next two specials. So. Yeah, oh, can you tell idea. us anything about that? Um, I'd have to shoot you. That's okay, that's fine. <laughs> Let's not go that way. Um, and the specials are available bottled and uh, draft as well. well. All our beers are uh, bottled and keg. So that's just our policy. Everything we brew, you can either get it in the pub or you can buy it on the off-license. And this is the first time actually I've had Grunt Saison since uh, you moved to the, your own brewery. Okay. Um, very nice, very peppery, very typical Saison. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very dry, very citrusy has a nice herb and spice finish. Excellent with kind of lighter food, particularly fish. My personal favorite is scallops. If you happen to be lucky enough to get your hands on some nice scallops, just pan fry them very gently and wash them down with this guy and that is a match made in heaven. Fantastic, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm here with another one of the new breweries at the festival. This is Clonakilty Brewing Company and Don and Joan, who are the owners of the company? Yep, we are indeed, yeah. And when did you guys start brewing? Uh, we started roughly October of last year. Uh, we did about two years of product development prior to that. So we had a garage brewery. So we had lots and lots of garage beer coming out and uh, we had a pilot plant, a proper pilot plant in the garage brewery and it all developed from there. Fantastic. And as the name suggests, you're in Clonakilty itself? Clonakilty, which is a, for everybody out there, a fantastic part of the world. Great for food and music and now beer. Uh, Clonakilty was famous for its beer years ago? It was Clonakilty Rassler. Yes, of course. And uh, we know the whole story of Rassler, and we have a pretty good idea how Rassler was made because there's a, quite a detailed account in the uh, Skibbereen Eagle of 1892. And there's a little twist in how the product is made, which is actually quite interesting, and it's something that we would be looking at going forward. Um, actually, Oliver Hughes's company registered the, the name Rassler. Uh, we tried to do a slightly different spelling of that because his spelling was different. And I also turned up an obituary for the guy who named it Rassler, uh, who lived in a place called Sam's Cross, which is just outside Clonakilty. So everything we do has a historical context. So you have a pill ale named after the local monkey from the World War II? Yeah, the, the monkey story is quite interesting. That was an American bomber that crash landed in Clonakilty during the war. And um, the, there was a crew of eight and they had a mascot on board. And they were in Clonakilty for about six weeks. Unfortunately, the monkey died, we think due to excessive hospitality, but there is now a bronze uh, memorial to um, Tojo in Clonakilty, 
And one of the spin-off effects is that if people are uh, tourists who come in, they read the label and the description on the label and they go down to a Donovan's Hotel to see the, um, the monument to Tojo. So it's quite an interesting story, but it's typical Clannic Kilty. Okay, I'm here with Alan from the Sullivan's Brewing Company, which is based in Kilkenny. And how long have you guys been going? Well, we, uh, we restarted and relaunched Sullivan's Brewing Company, which is established in 1702 in Kilkenny. We relaunched it last summer. So we started pouring in uh, some of the outlets on John Street, including uh, Langton's um, last June. So uh, it's just eight months now. And uh, Kilkenny being the city of Red Ale, you've gone with the Red Ale as your flagship? That's right. We thought uh, these are probably the world's most discerning ale drinkers. So why wouldn't we try launch our own version of a traditionally brewed Red Ale? We have a fantastic master brewer in Ian Hamilton. He was a master brewer at Smithix for 15 years came on board with us last year and developed what I think is one of the, well, we'll leave it to you to decide, but one of the one of the best red ales we've tasted for um, a long time. The, the malting's name is connected to the both Sullivan's and Smithix families? That's right. Yeah, the malting's is actually the original brewery building on James's Street in Where Kilkenny. Where the shopping centre is now? It, it is now, yeah. It backs on to it. Yeah. So you can still see it in the original shape of the building. It's now Chamber of Commerce offices. But it was the original brewery, 1702, the arch gateway into it, and uh, it's the brewery that was bet on a horse. The Sullivan's Brewing Company, of course, was uh, infamously bet on a horse in Deauville in France in 1918 and lost, and that's when it fell into the hands of the Smithix family. And uh, you have a tasting room then on, is it on John Street? In that's right, yeah, the Sullivan's Tap Room is, uh, it's right opposite Langton's actually, in uh, on John Street, and uh, we launched it last September, and it's thankfully gone from strength to strength. We're looking forward to having lots of people down this summer though. If you're coming to Kilkenny, please, uh, please stop by. So I'm here with Jack Smith of Jack Smith's Brewery. Yeah, that's the one. Named, um, named after myself. Proud. <laughs> fantastic. Um, so Jack Smith is one of the most unusual origin stories of any Irish brewery. It's an offshoot of the Box Together. Yeah, it is. So essentially we have a restaurant, Temple Bar, and you know, we were thinking of what things that we could bring to the restaurant, something extra, you know, and we thought a brewery. You know, there's a great, like, rise in craft breweries across Ireland, and we thought that, you know, this would be a really good shot for us to promote something else. And yeah, I don't know, here we are. Fantastic. And, and you have two beers? Yeah, uh, we do. Actually? Well, we have three, actually, but unfortunately we only have two on show today. Red of the red. But we have a gold ale, and we have a stout. And then we also have a red ale. And these are available exclusively in the Gallagher's yeah, restaurant? At the moment, they're only available in the restaurant, and they're going really well. They're actually, we're selling loads, and it's actually going really good. But um, yeah, hopefully, soon enough, later on, we'll be able to maybe get them out in the source. And the uh, restaurant's in town, but the brewery is out on Green Hills Road, is that correct? Yeah, it's out by Tala. Yeah, and uh, in the glamorous industrial estates yeah, that most Irish. Robbie are. Keane himself, he'd, I think he'd be proud. So yeah, <laughs> keeping it Irish. And which has been the most popular of the two beers so far? Um, well, we've had the gold out for the longest amount of time, so yeah, that's probably our most popular. But our stout is getting really good uh, receivership from everyone here, so you know, there's great hopes for that. Yeah. And it's so it's a, it's a classic Irish dry stout. Yeah, it is. You know, we actually have put a bit of cacao in that in the brew, so it kind of answers like chocolatey hint. I'm not sure if you could taste it, but uh, yeah, it's really nice. So we're really happy with our three new beers that we've launched at the festival. Only three? Only three, yeah. So, yeah, sure, look. Um, so we've our Little Bangin', which is a 3.8 uh, session IPA. And then we've our Double Bangin', which actually won best IPA of the festival. And that's uh, clocking in at 8%. And we've our lovely export yeah, stout as well. And these two, the new ones, they're variations on the Big Bangin' IPA, which was... One of the sensations of last year, I think. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that, that was best IPA, and that, that won the cup last year. But um, there's different hops in these. We've got some El Dorado and a few other different things in there, you know. So, but we're still um, very much on the sort of West Coast. Yes, so. yes, yes, uh, definitely, yeah. So um, it's, but they're, they're smashing. They're going down really well, so. And the export start then, what's the story there? So it's all about the malt. So there's uh, brown malt and there's some some beach smoked malt in there as well so that's that's what's giving it that nice those nice flavors it's you know it's really chewy delicious oh yes you have a tap room is that open and functional and available it's open yeah we're uh, doing tours on friday evenings at half six and saturday afternoons at three o'clock 
so you can check it out on royriverbrewingco.com and uh, <laughs> and um, yeah and so we can obviously you get a few samples there as part of the tour and how are they as a company to work for <laughs> well as you can see there with uh, the little interjection from Alan it's good crack yeah I would concur I agree with everything he has said that is true <laughs> thank you um, this is a blended barrel pale ale. Um, it involved uh, a bourbon barrel beer and also a steamed barrel that was used to enhance the woody character of the beer and reduce the bourbon character of it. So it's a milder cousin of the Kentucky version. So the base pale ale, is this a pre-existing beer? Is this the Fox's Rock? This would be Fox's Rock pale ale married to a, a bourbon cask and also um, a steamed non-bourbon cask. So it's a blend of three beers? Two beers. Uh, two three, beers. Yes, three, yeah. And uh, is it purely experimental or are you planning to sell it? Well, judging by the uh, reaction from the crowd at the festival, we'd be looking to maybe do a keg series off this beer, hopefully. That would be, that would be my dream. So mainly for a draft rather than bottles? Yes, yes, definitely, yes. Fantastic, thank you very much. Anyway, so that was the 2017 Old Pick Craft Beer and Food Festival. Uh, I certainly enjoyed myself. Uh, I'm going to go enjoy myself a little bit more after I turn the camera off. And, uh, what's the verdict, John? Hey, absolutely superb. That's superb. Coconuts. Anyway, I've got no beer. That's water coming out of here. Let's go. <laughs>